Hi everyone, I'm Kat. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be starting a vlog that I'm a little bit nervous for. We're going to be reading the three highest rated books on my TBR and the three lowest rated books on my TBR. I've been planning to do this video for a while and I was going to do two separate ones with all the highest in one video and all the lowest in another, but I want a higher chance of success. So I'm going to combine them and hopefully that will give us some more winners. I mean, hopefully they'll all be winners. Wouldn't that be so incredible? Uh, these are all books that I want to read, so I would hope that they're good. I'm interested in reading them, but obviously not every book can be a home run. So we'll see how it goes. Um, the only sort of like rules, guidelines I have for myself, I think I only have two, is one, um, I am predicting that the highest rated books are going to be mostly nonfiction and I'm not going to read those in this video. I just feel like nonfiction isn't that interesting to like vlog and read and talk about in a video. I also feel like I need to be in a very specific mood for certain nonfiction. So we're going to skip over my nonfiction and also I'm sure at the top and maybe at the bottom too, there will be some unpublished books. So obviously we're not going to read those. I think that's it. Let's just get into it. Should I find out the lowest or the highest rated first? Let's do lowest to try and end on a happier note in this clip at least. I don't remember which way Goodreads does it first when you select um, sorting by average rating. So let me just block this first before I see. I don't want to spoil myself for the highest. Okay, it looks like lowest first. So like I thought, these first few are unpublished books um, that just don't have any ratings. The first one that is published is The Deep by Nick Cutter. I think we'll find out what I'm going to be reading and then we'll talk about the books, why I'm interested in them, um, their lowest average rating and go from there. Uh, so the second book is It Will End Like This by Kira Lee. This is a recent, recently published book. I think this came out the beginning of January. Another not published book. And the third is The Project by Courtney Summers. Okay. Okay, so first The Deep by Nick Cutter. This has an average rating of 3.38, which isn't super low by any means. Um, I'm actually surprised that that is the lowest rated thing that I have on my TBR. I added this to my TBR after reading The Troop, which is one of my favorite horror books of all time. This is like an oceany horror, which I really love. Another one of my favorite books is Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant. I love that like science fiction ocean horror. It just really does something for me. I have no guesses as to why this has a fairly low average rating. Um, I haven't seen many people I follow read or talk about this, so I don't really know what the general consensus and vibe is. I think what we'll do is after I read a book, we'll go and like look through the ratings and see what the thoughts are. So next is This Will End Like This by Kira Lee. This has an average rating of 3.45. Again, not super low. Um, this, I'm not surprised that it's, well, I guess I am and I'm not. I'm not surprised it's towards the bottom because it is a YA thriller. I know I'm not alone in struggling with that, but I do find that the closer a book is to its release date, the higher the average rating is. Um, so I'm a little surprised to see it this low. This is like a Lizzie Borden retelling reimagination. And last is The Project by Courtney Summers. This I'm not surprised to see lower on the list. This has an average rating of 3.53. Um, Unlike The Deep, I have seen quite a few people I follow talk about this and not love it. I don't think I've seen anyone outright hate it, but I have not seen a lot of love for this book, but it is one I'm really excited for still. Uh, Courtney Summers wrote another one of my favorite books, Sadie, and this is a YA thriller about a cult and like I am very interested in cults. So I feel like this one could really work for me. Okay, so we got the lowest rated out of the way and honestly, I'm pleasantly surprised. I was expecting at least like one to two of the lowest rated books to be books that I... Obviously, I'm interested in the books because they're on my TBR, but that I just wasn't super stoked on reading. These two books I'm actually pretty excited to read. Um, I think once I have all of the six books that I'm going to read, we'll do my ranking and how I think I'm going to like them. All right, so back to the TBR. Let's sort the other way. Again, like I thought, um, a lot of these books have not been published yet. Ooh, our first one, Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. I'm super down to read that. Not published yet. That is a nonfiction. Here we, we're getting into more and more nonfiction. Oh, okay. Hazel Bly and the Deep Blue Sea by Ashley Heron Blake. Funnily enough, this is on my TBR for this month, so that works out well. 
Ooh, Manhunt. I actually do have an arc of that, so I could read it, even though it's not out yet. Let's just stick to published books, though. Oh, okay. Betty by Tiffany McDaniel is going to be my third book. Okay, I'm actually kind of surprised by the highest rated. I didn't really have any predictions, but I'm just surprised that these three books came up. So Heartstopper Volume 4 has an average rating of 4.67, which is quite high. But I'm not surprised because the only people who are still reading this series are people who have loved the first three books in the series. So I would assume that each book in this series, the average rating just gets higher and higher. This came out last year and was on my most anticipated list. I don't know why, I just like never picked it up and it kind of just got pushed to the back burner. But I'm really looking forward to reading this. I could be in the mood for a nice, sweet, heartwarming story. And next is Hazel Bly and the Deep Blue Sea. I'm not absolutely shocked that this is high on the list. I guess I'm not shocked by any of these three books. I'm just, I'm just surprised, but I don't know what I was expecting. This has an average rating of 4.42. This author's books are incredible. Her middle grade is incredible and just really, again, heartwarming and just like special. And like I said, this was on my TBR for this month, which just works out really well. And next is Betty by Tiffany McDaniel. I just recently picked this up. This has an average rating of 4.39. And I guess I'm just surprised because I did just recently add this onto my TBR and my physical shelf. Um, I don't know much about it. The only thing I've heard about it is just like how incredible and emotional it is. So as of right now, this is my prediction of how I think I'll like this book. Hazel and Heartstopper are kind of interchangeable. I don't think I've ever given an Ashley Herring Blake book lower than a five star. I've never given a Heartstopper edition lower than a five star. Based on what I've heard about Betty, I think I could really, really like it. Emotional stories usually just get me. Um, I do think I'll like the project even though I haven't seen the greatest things about it. I still just feel like it could be a story for me. The Deep, I am hoping I'll like. Um, like, just because it's this low on the list doesn't mean I'm thinking I, will, I won't like this. I just think I will enjoy the other books more than this. The only one that I will not be surprised at all by if I don't like is It Will End Like This. Like I mentioned, YA books, we're having a weird time right now. YA thrillers, I've always had a weird time with. And that paired with it having a fairly low average rating is a little scary. I was thinking about making more of like a set plan in the order I'm gonna read these books, but I think I just kind of want to mood read, just pick up the books um, when I'm in the mood for them. So the first book I'm going to start with is The Deep by Nick Cutter. I'm just coming off of filming my romance Valentine's Day vlog. Um, I will have that linked if you want to check it out, but I'm a little romanced out, so I definitely want some horror. I also mentioned in that video that I've been playing this new game with my boyfriend called The Forest, and there's kind of like an underwater cave spooky element to that, and that's kind of what I'm in the mood for now. Um, I don't think it's similar to what's happening in here, maybe, but I'm just kind of in the mood for that like spooky atmosphere. Um, so in this, we're following a man named something, Luke. Um, so in this world, there's a plague called the Gets, and it's basically you forget how to do things. Um, first, it's just starting with like forgetting where you put your keys and where you parked your car in the parking lot but then it turns into your body forgetting like how to breathe and function. And scientists believe they have found the cure under the ocean. So they set up a research lab eight miles under the sea surface, but the station stops communicating with them. A brave few descend through the lightness fathoms in hopes of unraveling the mysteries lurking at those crushing depths, and perhaps to encounter an evil blacker than anyone could possibly imagine. So from what I remember, Luke's brother um, was one of the scientists to go down there, and now he is being sent to figure out what's going on. Sorry, I look a little crusty dusty. I don't feel that great. Not like ill. Um, I just had a really long day at work. It's been a long week at work. I've been working overtime every day so I can leave early on Friday because I'm driving back to New Jersey. Um, so it's just been long days. My eyes are really bothering me. I just sat in the bath for a while in the dark listening to an audiobook. But um, I have made it to page 167 in the deep and I'm really fucking liking it. I've been kind of trying to think of why this has a lower average rating, uh, but it's pretty hard when I'm liking it so much because I'm just like, how could anybody not like this? Um, but I do get it if it's just like not your thing. Sciency ocean stuff is my shtick. I love it. 
Um, but if you're not that into it, I can see why this really wouldn't interest you that much. Or maybe people are liking those parts, but there have been quite a few flashbacks to um, Luke's life and family and his relationship like with his wife and his situation with his son who went missing when he was six or seven I believe. Um, maybe people aren't as interested in those parts. I don't know but I'm really loving it. I've been listening to those like haunted underwater spooky ambiance rooms and then also playing the audiobook while I've been physically reading and it's just making for a really great immersive reading experience. There have been so many parts already that are so like creepy and chilling. And I'm really interested in what's going on. Like there are a few different layers to this story, like the overall plague, the gets, um, what's happening down in the research lab, like why people stopped communicating. And I'm assuming, or maybe not, but you know, his son being missing is a fairly large part of the story. And I have a feeling that that might tie in somehow, especially because of a few things that have been mentioned. There have also been flashbacks to Luke's childhood and we get more insight to his relationship with his mom and his relationship with his brother. And I'm just equally interested in all of the different things that are going on. Excuse my hair, I just washed it. And you can probably also hear my dishwasher going in the back. This is so good. I'm so ready to read the negative reviews and just fight for my life because at this point, I love this book. Maybe the ending sucks or something, but I'm loving this. Um, I just made it to part five. Yeah, so I have two parts left. It's about a hundred pages and I'm just loving this so much. Um, this definitely does remind me of The Troop, just in the way that I... Both of the books I've read from Nick Cutter, I wouldn't necessarily describe them as scary, because to me that means something very specific. It's more like jump scares, afraid to turn off the lights kind of thing. But what I've more so experienced from both of these books is just completely unsettled. Like, Nick Cutter really taps into phobias. Like you will get freaked out by this book if you have a fear of the ocean, a fear of small spaces, um, a fear of bugs, of bees, of clowns. And I just love that. It just creates such a sense of unease. I don't think I've ever read a book where as I'm reading I'm genuinely like pushing the book away from me because I just feel so unsettled by it. Four stars. I still really, really love this. Would definitely recommend it if it sounds interesting to you. We'll definitely continue to read from this author. He actually has a book coming out with another author that sounds really freaking good. But I really did not like the last, I don't know, 50 pages of this maybe. It gets very fever dreamy and I can be down with that. Like it kind of reminded me of Bunny and All's Well by Mona Awad um, where like both of those books, there are just several moments where it feels very fever dreamy. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know if what was going on was actually real or not. And that's an element in both of those books that I really, really enjoyed. And I've enjoyed that element in other books as well. But in here, it was just like a little bit too fever dreamy for me. And I also did not like how this ended, how it wrapped up, like the explanation for everything. I wish I could explain why, but I don't want to spoil anything. Um, but I just wish it went in a different direction. And maybe this next thing I'm going to say is kind of a spoiler. I don't really think it is, but, um, one thing I was happy about at first is that the gets, the plague that's going on, was not a really big part of the story. I was a little nervous going into this because I kind of recently read a book that was about a plague, a pandemic, and I really didn't like it because it was like a little too real for me. Um, so at first I was like, oh, I'm liking that this isn't so at the forefront of this story. But now finishing it, I just kind of don't get why it was a part of the story at all. Um, like the reason they, the scientists go down there to research this ambrosia is because they think it could be a cure for the gets. But they could have just made it be a cure for like cancer or just Alzheimer's or something like that. This plague disease thing didn't really need to be created because it didn't really play any other part in the story. And I think my last note, which doesn't have anything to do with the actual plot of the story, is just something that kind of made me uncomfortable, is the descriptions of 
Luke and Clayton's mom. Uh, she's described as being fat and like just the descriptions of it, I don't know. It just read as being like very fat phobic to me. Like every time their mom is brought up, it's just like she's fat and disgusting and fat and ugly and disgusting and gross and fat and fat. And I'm just like, eh, okay. And unfortunately that's a fairly common thing when it comes to horror where, and honestly not even just horror because the first thing that just came to my mind was Matilda. Um, so I guess just in books and media in general, where like the bad, evil, villainous characters a lot of the time are ugly or fat or both. And it was just like so much in here, the descriptions of her body and how she looked, it just made me a little uncomfortable. But besides those things, I did really enjoy most of this. I love science ocean horror. It is just my shit. Um, so let's read some negative reviews, shall we? I'm not gonna read too many because I feel like my reaction to these are pretty much gonna be the same. I did a video once where I read negative reviews of my favorite books and I think I actually have it privated now because I just, I just didn't like it because to me it just wasn't an interesting video because I just don't have many thoughts or things to add about people's uh, negative reviews of books, even if it's a book I absolutely loved. I feel like most of the time when I read those negative reviews, I am like, oh, I'll, I can see that. I can see why they didn't like this, but it's just something that worked for me. So we'll just look at a couple. Uh, so this first one says, I didn't care about any of the characters. By the halfway point, I wanted them all to die. <laughs> I did not experience that. Um, the flashback scenes, roughly half of the content were by and large completely unnecessary incredibly boring and had so little to do with the plot. It was like reading two entirely different tales. Um, I do get that. I already talked about that, I think. I can understand why people wouldn't like that part of the story. And I feel like that's something I normally don't like in books. Um, a lot of this reminded me a lot of Stephen King's writing. Specifically, I would say parts of It and The Shining. Um, and that just reminded me because this is an element that I think Stephen King uses a lot. And I usually haven't liked that in the past, but in here for some reason I did. The scientists are looking for a miracle substance called ambrosia that can cure pretty much anything except boredom for the reader. What is ambrosia exactly? Where does it come from? Don't ask because you won't find out except some vague allusions towards the end. That's actually something I feel like we do find that out. Or I thought I found that out. I thought I got an explanation for that. But again, I can't really argue with this person because maybe that's just something I got from the book and they didn't pick up on it or they just like read and understood things differently. I do actually agree with this one too. I didn't talk about this, but um, recently I've encountered a number of authors who feel it necessary to spell out sound effects. Nick Cutter in The Deep is one of the worst offenders. He gives us the noise made by an approaching millipede. I won't read these out. Of an opening trunk, of footsteps, and much more. Um, which I do agree with. And I just recently complained about this with White Smoke by Tiffany D. Jackson. And in here, I definitely did not like it. I I think it's just like very cartoonish and cheap, I guess. My complaint with White Smoke is like, I wish she had just explained what the thing sounded like instead of making a sound effect. But it was strange in here because Nick Cutter did describe those sounds and described them really well. He is so good at like really descriptive visceral descriptions um but then he also would do that and then include like the sound effect which i didn't like 10 out of 10 would not let nick cutter alone with any kid or animal in every book he has to describe animal torture or some fucked up stuff it might be harsh but i don't consider that as horror it just feels messed up and it's not for me at all i feel like majority of horror books include not animal torture but some fucked up stuff so Maybe this person just doesn't really like reading horror. I think that's all I'm gonna read because as predicted, I'm just kind of like supporting these people because if they didn't get out of this book what I did, if they didn't like it, um, like I understand that all of their points I kind of understand. Also, I do wanna say, because I don't think I made this clear in my intro, I know this doesn't have a super low average rating, like a 3.38 is not bad at all. It just happens to be the lowest rated book on my TBR, but it's really not bad. And it's honestly not far off from what my actual rating is. And I really liked the book. Um, so first book was a success. I enjoyed this. I'm looking uh, quite rough. Let's just cover that up. This week has been so busy at work. I'm honestly so excited to sit in the car for the next seven hours and just like decompress and be by myself, listen to my book, 
some music, a podcast, and just like chill the fuck out. I'm going to be listening to Hazel Bly and the Deep Blue Sea. I think I've listened to about an hour of it so far. Um, I don't think I'll have much to update on. Well, one, I'm going to be listen listening to the entirety of it in the car, so I know for sure I won't update as I'm driving. And I feel like I never have much to say with middle grade as I'm reading it. Um, I just feel like there's not much to discuss, but at this point I'm liking it. We're following Hazel and her family after one of her mothers died in a kayaking accident um, and she was there for it. Since then they've just kind of moved all around, never stayed in one place for too long. Um, but they have just moved to Maine, I believe, um, and they end up meeting another family and the mother, Hazel's surviving mother, used to be best friends with, and she has a daughter that is Hazel's age. I feel like this book, honestly all of Ashley Herring Blake's middle grade, but especially this one, would be a really great book to read with your kids if you're wanting to start certain conversations. Just at this point there's been some talk about grief and losing a parent, and I'm assuming there will be even more of that. Um, and the anxiety that Hazel now experiences from that. She's very scared that she's going to get hurt, that her younger sister is going to get hurt. Um, she carries like a first aid kit everywhere with her and she also has scars on her face from the accident and I feel like that is an important thing to talk to your kids about, just like how some people can look different. Obviously Hazel has two moms so there's the opportunity to talk about how different families can look um, and it is stated that Hazel's surviving mom is actually bisexual and Hazel also meets some of the girl's Lemons friends and one of her friends, Jamie, um, is wearing a pin that says, ask me about my pronouns and Hazel does that and there's a really good conversation there about being non-binary and asking people's pronouns and I just think it could be a really good way to talk about some of those different topics with your younger kids. Um, I also got some book mail that I wanted to show you. I pre-ordered some books from Barnes & Noble. This is the first time I've ever pre-ordered a book. They were having a sale a few weeks ago, so I decided to take advantage. And I love it because they didn't send me like a shipping notification or anything. So when they showed up at my door, I was like, ooh, a present that I bought for myself. But I got, ooh, this is like my favorite type of paperback where it's like the bigger size and it's just really nice and floppy. I don't know, this size is just perfect to me. But I got the book of The Most Precious Substance by Sarah Gran. I have read Come Closer by this author and really, really enjoyed it. I honestly don't really know much about what this is about. I read the synopsis quite a while ago um, and I was just like, this sounds interesting and intriguing and kind of weird and I knew I liked the author's writing. This is a horror book following a former novelist. Um, she's resigned herself to a dull sexist life as a rare book dealer until she gets a lead on a book that could turn everything around. A 17th century manual on sex magic rumored to be the most powerful occult book ever written if it exists at all and some of the wealthiest people on earth are willing to pay Lily and her partner a fortune to find it if they can. Will Lily fulfill her own desires and join them or will the book destroy her as it has so many others? It says it's an addictive erotic thriller about the links we'll get we'll go to get what we need and want. I don't know. This sounds really good to me. I'm excited to read this one. I can't get over how bad this lighting is and unfortunately this is pretty much the lighting situation we're gonna be stuck with for the rest of this video while I'm at my boyfriend's. Big lighting is bad, little lighting is good. Um, so it's like 30 hours later. I actually didn't end up finishing Hazel Bly in the Deep Blue Sea. I was just feeling really antsy on the drive. Normally I really like it, kind of like I mentioned, I don't mind the long drive. I enjoy being in my car, um, but I was just feeling really antsy. It was feeling really long, so I was kind of switching a lot between what I was listening to. I think I only have like 30 minutes left, but didn't finish. Today I did start It Will End Like This by Kira Lee. I'm about like 35, 40% of the way through. And um, <laughs> I think this book is quite bad. So this is a YA horror thriller. I think I mentioned earlier it was a Lizzie Borden retelling. That's not like the correct way to talk about that because Lizzie Borden isn't a fictional story. She was a real person who existed. Um, but it's kind of inspired by her story and her life and what she allegedly did or did not do. But we are following two sisters, Maddie and Charlotte, whose POVs are entirely impossible to distinguish between. The book starts off the night that their mother dies and then it kind of fast forwards to I think like four months later and at that point their dad has seemingly moved on and is dating 
another woman who was their mom's assistant. So first of all, I'm not liking the writing. Like I said, the two POVs are impossible to tell the difference between. And also the sentences, like there's just a lot of short stagnated sentences that just feels very choppy. But I just don't really get the plot of this. Um, both of the girls keep talking about how they need to find out what happened and they meet this girl whose mom was friends with their mom and she tells them that she has some letters that their mom sent to her mom if they want to read them and they're like oh yeah we have to go see what these letters say and I bet this girl Lana knows what really happened and the letters are going to reveal what really happened but it's like what do you mean what really happened like I guess the the girls think that something else happened to their mom but nothing should lead them to believe that and then one of the girls is like looking through stuff in the house one day and she finds weed killer and she reads on the package that it's like toxic to humans and she's like oh, poison someone poisoned my mom and I, why do you think that they already talked about how their mom was a really big gardener and she loved tending to the garden in their house so like why would you think the only reason you have weed killer in the house is because someone poisoned your mother. There's like more plot points I could talk about, but I don't want to spoil anything in case you're still interested in reading this. But yeah, at this point, I'm just like confused and I don't get the connection to Lizzie Borden's story at all. So I don't have much more to say about this book. I thought it was pretty bad. I think I'm gonna give it one star, I guess. Like, I don't have anything good to say about it, really. I didn't like the writing. I didn't like the characters. I thought the plot was really messy and convoluted and maybe convoluted isn't really the right word because I wouldn't call it confusing but it's just like it just didn't make sense why the girls were looking so hard like why they thought their mother was murdered they kept saying they found evidence but like they didn't and why were they looking for this evidence in the first place I will say I'm not really surprised this was at the bottom of my list for my predictions for a reason. So I guess I agree with more of the general consensus of the low average rating, even though again this doesn't have a low average rating, it's 3.4, it's not bad. I do think if this gets more popular that will continue to lower. It is a fairly recent release, as of right now it only has about 300 ratings. And as for the ratings, I don't really know what to do if I agree with the general consensus. Like for the deep I read the opposite opinion that I had because it had a low average rating, but I rated it pretty high. I think maybe if I agree with the low or the high average rating, I'll read one negative review and one positive review. I'll have someone to agree with and someone that has a differing opinion. So let's read a negative review first. This person gave it 0.5 stars. Um, I had a hard time finishing this book. The writing was juvenile and the story should have been fleshed out more. Definitely agree with both of those things. I understand the connections between the Borden murders and I, it was the reason I was initially interested in the book, but it did not live up to my expectations. That was also the reason I was interested in this and I don't really get the connection. I mean like I do but I don't know not enough I guess. Yeah like it didn't live up to my expectation. Now for a five star. If you want a book that takes your emotions to the next level read this one. From the pain that these sisters felt from losing their mom to the anger and vengeance you want from for Charlotte. It will end like this will keep you engaged and enthralled. I didn't really feel like I wanted um, vengeance for Charlotte and I wasn't engaged or enthralled. Um, I couldn't put it down. Anything with sisters and the death of a mother always gets me emotional, so a book like this is up my alley. I definitely recommend it, and if you think you know the ending, I promise you, you don't. I think that was part of my issue, because I did know the ending. We know this is a Lizzie Borden-inspired story, and if you know the story of Lizzie Borden, like, you know how it's gonna end. And I kind of feel like I'm giving a spoiler by saying this, but Again, my thing is, it's not a spoiler, um, but I guess like the question in real life is like, did Lizzie actually do this? Did she kill her parents or did she not? And I guess that is like the mystery in here as well. But it's, I'm sorry, spoiler alert, like skip ahead five seconds, but like it's, it's not solved. So it's a mystery in real life and it's a mystery in the book. And I knew that from the beginning because I know the story of Lizzie Borden. I'm like disappointed, but again, I'm not surprised. Um, this is at the bottom of my list. I hope it remains at the bottom of my list. I hope nothing gets a lower rating than this. I mean, it can't get lower than one star, but I hope I don't like anything less than this. I'm going to start the project by Courtney Summers next. 
Again, I'm a little scared, especially because of how this one went, because that is also YA. talk for too long in this update because I got like three hours of sleep last night and I feel horrible and I feel like on top of feeling horrible I'm not going to be making much sense but I started the project I'm not too far into it I think I got to page like 80 or something 87 um so this is a YA thriller we are also following two sisters like the last book and basically the younger sister Lo got in a car accident with her parents both of their parents died and Lo was in a coma for a period of time and during that time the older sister B um, ended up meeting this guy, meeting these people and getting involved in a cult. Hmm. Big Burger King blowout. <laughs> Fuck. What is it? What did they say? Who? Mm -hmm. Some TikTok I guess. Mm. Ooh, ooh, big Snow blowout. Yeah that. <laughs> Why did you just want to say that? Yeah. That's, what I, that's the vibe I was catching. Mm, okay. So we're mostly reading from Lowe's perspective, but we have gotten a few chapters from B's perspective. And so far it's just kind of like set up for the story. Lowe is now working as an assistant. I think it's like a magazine, newspaper, publishing type thing. Um, and she really wants to get into doing that, even though now she's just working as an assistant. Um, so kind of killing two birds with one stone, she wants to research the cult, which is called the Unity Project, both to do some work for this place and get hired as a writer um, and find out what happened to her sister. No real thoughts so far. She's talked to a few people that are in the cult, um, kind of trying to infiltrate it. And that part has been interesting. But today is Valentine's Day. We're actually gonna take a break from that and I'm gonna read Heart Software Volume 4 today. I was planning to read this on Valentine's Day um, just because I knew I wanted to read something I was pretty sure I was gonna like and just a sweet, wholesome, romancy story but I'm actually super happy I'm reading this today because one, like I said, I feel horrible. I feel exhausted. So I feel like a graphic novel is the perfect, perfect thing to read when I do want to read, but uh, brain capacity is low. Also, I have work today and my boyfriend and I have some stuff to do um, after work. So I won't have as much time to read as I normally would, but I'm really looking forward to reading this. I haven't read the Heartstopper series. I've read the first three volumes both of them twice I think or the third one I've only read once um, but I think it's been like at least a year probably over a year since I've read them so I'm excited to get back into the story. I'm on my lunch right now I don't know if I want to jump into this right now I kind of just want to like lay down with my eyes shut. Ooh, you know what I'll do? Um, I did find the audiobook for this on Scribd, so maybe I'll just like close my eyes and listen to the audio of this for a little while. Same spot, different day. Um, I finished Heartstopper Volume 4 yesterday, and I think I'm gonna give it four stars. This is the lowest rating, I know it's not a low rating, but the lowest rating I've given to a volume in the series. Um, all of the other three I've given five stars. I did still really enjoy it. If you don't know, this is a graphic novel contemporary series following two boys, Nick and Charlie, um, as their relationship grows and develops and how they as individuals grow and develop. I think there's two reasons this wasn't a five star. Um, one is something I think I've mentioned like a hundred times in this video is it is a YA series. I'm getting away from YA more and more. And two, I didn't love how this story was told. Um, all of the volumes are very slice of lifey. None of them really have a huge plot to them, which is fine. Obviously, I love the other volumes and I just enjoy seeing the characters and their day to day life. Um, this one was a little bit different where it had that same setup, but then a lot of this story is almost like a flashback. This was a much heavier edition. Um, most of it is focused on Charlie's struggles with his mental health. So I would give trigger warnings for mental illness, um, self-harm, although you don't see anything happen on page, um, eating disorders, homophobia. So the way this was kind of set up was in the beginning, we see that Charlie is struggling and we see Nick worrying about how to care for him and address his issues. But then we kind of fast forward like, four to six months, I think, and we're told what happened over those months 
first from Nick's perspective and then from Charlie's perspective. And I just didn't enjoy that like flashback as much. But overall, this was still really sweet. And I did really love the discussions in here of mental health and how to best support and help a partner or a friend who is struggling with their mental health. This was the highest rated book on my list and I definitely understand the really high rating. Um, I think especially if you've read this entire series, you will just continue to enjoy the characters even if you don't absolutely love everything that happens. I guess I am technically below the average rating but I still did really enjoy it. So I guess for this one since it was highest rated and I gave it a high rating, we'll look at some low ratings. I don't think I've ever read low ratings for this book series before or this graphic novel series. Um, I don't really know like what negative things people could have to say about it. Out of like 70,000 plus reviews there's only 80 one star reviews. I just realized I've given all the books in the series two stars. For some reason I keep thinking the next one will be better. Maybe it has something to do with all those five star ratings. This is officially the last one I'll read. I honestly don't know why you would go this far in the series if you didn't really enjoy any of the other ones. Um, the author so desperately wants to feel important and woke. Meanwhile all I feel reading this is cringiness feel important and woke. I definitely don't get that from Alice Oseman. I don't think putting things to do with mental health and why is doing what authors think it is. Awareness is great, but I don't think teenagers are the target audience to raise awareness on subjects where they are often affected the most. People like to read to find escapism, and when authors cover topics like eating disorders as the subplot, it's not offering that escapism that people may want. I don't feel like everyone always reads for escapism. There are definitely books I read and I kind of just want to like plug out of life and like have a good time but I think reading about topics like this is really important especially for younger adults where I think in that time of your life you feel like very alone and you're like I'm the only person who's experiencing things, these things I'm like crazy I'm weird and I think reading about those things and seeing that you are not the only one that experiences those things is very validating and very important. I see a few people saying that like this was a lot darker than the other ones which it definitely was even though the other ones do touch on like a few more difficult topics this one was very heavily focused on those difficult darker topics um so i can see why that wouldn't be everyone's cup of tea if you are just expecting the more light sweet fun story so i'm not exactly loving the project i keep wanting to call this there was no flaw in you there's just not much happening and the last time i updated you at like 80 pages i was okay with that because i'm okay with at that point of the story still being in like setup mode but now i've read about another 100 pages and still not much is happening and i just want there to be a little bit more like weirdness darkness intensity something like we're talking about a cult here sorry i just keep coming back to this spot to update because that's the best lighting in the house um I don't want to finish this. I made it just the halfway point um, or just past the halfway point. I'm on page 187 and I just have like no will to continue. It is nice stretch. Uh, it is so unbelievably boring. I can't believe a thriller mystery book about cults is so boring. And I'm trying to think because I think sometimes the books I DNF like it doesn't really make sense because early in this video I read what did I give that book? Two stars. Um, it will end like this. And I think that book is worse than this book. Like, objectively speaking, uh, the writing is good in here. Like, the story is good, but it's just not the, like, cult thriller story that I want. I need more. I need it to be darker and more intense. I need more things to be going on. So far, and I mean, like maybe I'm speaking too soon, maybe shit goes crazy at the, in the second half of this, but like so far it's really just been a contemporary about a girl investigating a cult. Like she's just being a journalist really. Um, there's just not enough going on. And with It Will End Like This, even though in the end, um, I think that book is pretty bad. I feel bad saying that, but uh, I was still interested in finishing. I was still interested in seeing how everything was going to wrap up, what was really going on, seeing the connections to the Lizzie Borden story. But in here, there's nothing that's pushing me to finish a story. I'm not interested enough. Um, I think being bored is my least favorite feeling to feel when I'm reading. So I think I am going to put it down because just no part of me wants to continue.
I'm sorry. So to finish up this video, I'm gonna be reading Betty by Tiffany McDaniel. I'm hoping, I'm hoping this does something great for me. I've heard it's pretty emotional. I would love to cry. Um, I think it's historical fiction. I don't know much about it, so let's read the synopsis together. A girl comes of age against the knife. So begins the story of Betty Carpenter. Born in a bathtub in 1954 to a white mother and a Cherokee father, Betty is the sixth of eight siblings. The world they inhabit in the rural town of Ohio is one of poverty and violence, both from outside the family and from within. But despite the hardships she faces, Betty is resilient. Her curiosity about the natural world, her fierce love for her sisters, and her father's brilliant stories are kindling for the fire of her own imagination. And in the face of all to which she bears witness, Betty discovers an escape. She begins to write. Inspired by generations of her family, Tiffany McDaniel sets out to free the past by delivering this heartbreaking yet magical story, a remarkable novel that establishes her as one of the most important voices in American fiction. This sounds great. I am a little nervous because it is a longer book than I typically like, um, and historical fiction can be kind of hit or miss for me. I used to say I didn't like it, but I think just because a lot of the historical fiction I see that's really popular is nothing I'm interested in, like uh, centered around wars and like the Great Depression and stuff. That's just, that's not my vibe, but I've read other historical fiction outside of those things um, that I've really enjoyed. Okay, I have it updated in a few days, but I'm about to drive back to Virginia and I just wanted to give a quick update before I do so. I am about three quarters of the way through Betty. Absolutely loving it. I think I'm especially excited about it just because I wasn't sure how I would feel because it is historical fiction. It is a lot longer than books I usually like to read, but I don't know. It's just great and like still three fourths of the way through it, I can say that this isn't a normal story that I would typically enjoy, but for some reason I just really am. We are just following Betty and her family throughout their lives and I just love following them. I love their dad so much. He is just so sweet and so caring and even though there is eight kids he has such a special relationship with each of them and he gives all of them a lot of time and attention and care and i'm really liking betty and all of her siblings and their relationships they just seem so real and genuine um like one second they're just absolutely hating each other like physically fighting and then the, the next second they're just like la -di da playing a game together and um as one of three siblings like that is just very accurate there are definitely some really difficult topics talked about in here um i would give trigger warnings for racism uh sexual assault incest physical emotional abuse um animal abuse there's a lot and i would look up um other ones also if you Think you might need them but in between all those really difficult dark moments there are just some really nice family moments that i'm really enjoying um there is also a lot about native culture in here that i'm really enjoying reading about okay time to wrap up this vlog first of all before i talk about the last book i read i started editing this video and i realized i never gave you a final wrap up to hazel Bly and the deep blue sea so i'm gonna do that now i ended up giving this five stars which is not a surprise i've said it before i think this author is incredible and i think especially her middle grade it just it hits different. I think she just does such an incredible job at talking about really difficult topics and bringing it down to an, an appropriate age level because even though they are difficult topics, they are things that people of all ages experience. Um, but I feel like there's not many resources or much representation for a younger age. This almost made me cry. And I was listening to the audiobook, which I don't think I've ever cried during an audiobook. I don't know, they just don't put me in a really invested emotional state, but this almost did it. I think if you've liked other books from this author, you'll enjoy this as well. I think if you're wanting to read a heartwarming middle grade that also touches on some more difficult topics like grief and trauma, you should definitely check this one out. Again, since I agree with the general consensus, the high average rating, we're gonna read one highly rated review and one lowly rated review. So first, this person gave it four and a half stars. They said Blake does a phenomenal job at weaving grief, PTSD, and other anxiety behaviors into Hazel, who is about as realistic and authentic as middle grade characters can get. She's often not likable, though beneath Hazel's anger it lies deep-seated pain, which I, f I definitely agree with. And I actually really liked that Ashley Herring Blake did this. A lot of times Hazel is 
really mean. She's not a good friend. She's not a good sister, a good daughter. She's mean to a lot of people around her and she does some not so great things to those people around her. Um, but you can't help but understand that. Like this person said, she's going through so many difficult things and she's not given the proper resources and just the support that she needs in those things. Um, Lemon is also grieving, but in a different way. Blake weaves dealing with grief and anxiety into the story so that it never feels like a big issue book, with the exception of the non-binary character Jules, which feels like the orientation is repeatedly reminded as big inclusivity reminder. I don't know if I felt like that. I guess I can kind of see that because there is sort of a romance in here. It's not really given much development. Um, it's more just of a crush but I did feel like that was not so important to the story and I could have definitely done without it. Um, so maybe that's what they mean just because that wasn't an important part of the story. They feel like it was just included for like inclusivity points, but whatever. This person gave it two stars. They said, I really struggled with this book there were some good aspects and some bad aspects. I thought it was great to have the LGBTQ plus relationships that were accepted and normalized, but I honestly thought the characters were annoying so I couldn't relate to them. Um, I get that. Like I said, a lot of the characters, not just Hazel, have some not so great qualities to them. Uh, but I don't feel like that makes me not able to relate to them. I feel like it makes them even more human. But I also don't feel like I need to relate to my characters to enjoy the book. Additionally, I am over parents being borderline emotionally abusive to their children. This I agree with, and this was also present in Ivy Aberdeen's Letter to the World. Both of the books are similar in the way that both of the children are dealing with some really heavy, big emotions, and their parents kind of ignore them, and not purposely, I wouldn't say. I don't think it's malicious, um, but they just don't really know how to help their children. Would I describe it as emotionally abusive? I don't think I would. And I think it's just another really realistic aspect to both stories where the parents just don't really know how to help their children. They don't even know that their children need help. Um, they're just sidetracked by their own things going on, their other children, their jobs, etc. So I don't think I would call it emotionally abusive, but I did notice that these stories in that way were quite similar. Um, I did just recently read Ivy Aberdeen, so maybe it's just like very top of mind for me. Okay, moving on to a book that has just ruined me. Um, I'm giving this five stars. I don't think ever in my life I have cried over a book so much. I've cried while reading before. I've cried for a long time while reading before. For like half of the book I've cried. This, <laughs> I cried several times throughout the story. You know, just, just a few tears. For the last 50 to 100 pages, sobbing. Like couldn't see the pages sobbing. And then once I was finished, for like three hours afterwards, I was just sobbing intermittently. I would cry for a while, stop, and then I would think about something that happened in this book again and I would just start sobbing again. Even now, I'm starting to tear up a little bit. These characters just wormed their way into my heart so hard. And the acknowledgement, that's what's really got me. I guess this is like semi nonfiction. I don't know. I don't know what is true and what is fake, but in the acknowledgements, the author thanks characters that are in this book and I know a lot of it is fictionalized because she thanks people and talks about people as if they're still alive but like in the book they died so I'm not really sure what is real what is fake Betty is the author's mother so it is heavily based on her life but like that just got me imagining real people in these situations I love Betty and her siblings so much but the real standout to me was their father their father <laughs> Their father was like the fucking greatest man alive and I just, I love him so much. I heard this was emotional, I heard this was sad, and it definitely was, but like, it was just at another level because the book makes you care for these characters so much. It was incredible. I will definitely be looking out for some more stuff from this author because like, <laughs> the way she made me feel. So again, we'll just read one positive review, one negative review. How could anyone say anything bad about this book? Five star review, this person said, there's so much love in this story as well as things to loved. Which I agree, like there's so many difficult things and horrible things that happen in this book. But honestly, like what the standout moments for me were, 
were the moments after those horrible things. Just when something bad happened and Betty or another one of her siblings went to oftentimes their father or each other for support, like, <laughs> It just warmed my heart. For every time this story broke my heart, McDaniel pieced it back together again. I loved the connection that Betty has with her sisters, despite how broken they seem to be at times, how desperate they are to escape this place and be seen as being worthy of love, but especially her father. I love that despite everything in her life that might break another person, Betty seems to bear the burdens and to thrive despite the adversity. The stories of her father offering her sol solace and fuels her desire to be more like him, to be a storyteller. Yeah, it was so good. And like this person mentioned, men and boys weren't included, the girls and women were chosen, the ones that had the power. That is um, a common theme or a theme that shows up a lot throughout the book. And I just really, really loved it. There are just so many, I really wanna go back and reread this. Unfortunately, I started this when I was at my boyfriend's and I didn't have any tabs, but like this shit would be tabbed up. I definitely wanna reread this this year already. And there are just so many parts, so many incredible lines that I just want to tap and be able to look back on. I'm not gonna read one of the negative reviews because honestly, I just quickly skimmed over like 20 of them and they all kind of seem to be saying the same things, which I kind of understand. They're basically all talking about how dark this book is and the really intense things that happen. I gave you a trigger warning before. As I said, I would look up more trigger warnings for this book if you think you'll need it. And I completely understand if people don't want to read about those things and they weren't prepared before going into this book and they were kind of caught off guard. And if they have a bad experience reading about these things. Um, I've seen, I saw a few reviews, people saying that it was like gratuitous and it was torture porn. I don't really, I didn't really think that, but I guess I could see why other people do. But yeah, I kind of think the negative reviews, like I, I get them and I get why this isn't a book for everyone because not everyone wants to read about the things that happen in here. But I absolutely loved it. This will 100% show up on my favorite list at the end of the year. So this is how my ranking ended up. My predictions are on the left and the final ranking is on the right. Um, a lot of stuff moved around actually. I did not think I was gonna like Betty as much as I did. I thought I was gonna like it, but I just did not expect to love it as much as I did. Um, Hazel, Bly, and the Deep Blue Sea in second. The Deep in third, which I'm surprised. I expected Heartstopper to be a five star. I don't know how much sense my last two ratings make because um, I dnf the projects. So you would think that would be at the bottom of my list, but honestly, like objectively speaking, I do think it is a better book <laughs> than it will end like this. Does that make sense to anybody why I finished one and not the other? No, but that's how it is. I feel like this video went really well. I really enjoyed four out of six books. That's a great success rate compared to my last romance vlog. So I'm feeling good. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye!